What's up guys, Race Nation TV here to talk about night number two from the Chili Bowl Nationals. Uh, now it is 1.09 a.m. and uh, it, it was a long night. The, honestly, it's 1.09 a.m. when recording uh, and the race just ended probably 20, 30 minutes ago maybe, if that. Uh, which uh, central time that would be around midnight for them, but 1 a.m. for me, which kind of blows, not going to lie. But um, I'm going to try and keep this as short as possible, probably not going to be as long as yesterday, but uh, we have a lot of things to talk about, uh, so let's get right into it. So first, let's talk about some of the uh, important things that happened early in the night in the heats. Uh, but right off the bat in heat number four, three or four, uh, Dylan Welch involved in a wreck in turn one, lap number one, uh, just got in there, got, I think he got a little bit of help, and uh, it just created this gridlock situation. Turn one, lap one, Jonathan Beeson uh, was also involved, who is someone who uh, I was keeping my eye on. Uh, but they, uh, uh, Beeson bounced back uh, to third from eighth, uh, where he started, and then Welch uh, managed to come back to fourth. Um, heat number six, Corey Eliason, someone I talked about last night as well, uh, took a huge tumble, just a huge tumble. That was insane. He went all the way uh, closer to the ramp on that side in turn number uh, three, that was insane. Um, Larson won his heat by five seconds, half a straightaway. That's how you know. Oh, it's happening again. Uh, he's fast. Duh. Um, then we go to the qualifiers. Uh, skip what nothing really important to go over in the C mains. But then we go to the qualifiers. Uh, Larson, right off the bat, almost got taken out in his qualifier. Uh, Days and Persley went over uh, in the qualifier. Uh, but the most important thing that happened, you see that earlier wreck, uh, Dylan Welch and Chase Johnson. Uh, Dylan Welch obviously going for a bit of a ride there. That's going to, that might end his Chili Bowl, honestly. Uh, Dylan, with the CB Industries team, uh, he did not make it after that point. Uh, he did not make it to the B, uh, so he did not have a chance to go after the A. And uh, he will be, I believe, in the J on Saturday, and that is if they can get the car together. Uh, if he even wants, even if he attempts at this point, uh, so I'll uh, we'll keep you updated on that as it happens. So not a good start for Dylan Welch. Chase Johnson, I'm I'm gonna honestly put that all on him. I mean he literally just walled him. Uh, that might have been because of the earlier incident in that race, but uh, yeah, just no excuse for that. He just absolutely walled him. It was kind of uncalled for. Uh, so yeah, that that was the big story of uh, of the qualifiers. Um, Kyle Larson in his qualifier, 5th to 1st, dominated. Uh, Thomas Mesrol 6th to 3rd, which that made Thomas Mesrol the top points guy going in, which put him on the pole for the A main. Uh, Kyle Larson was 2nd in the overall points uh, by the end of the qualifiers. Uh, and then we get to the Viroc race, which is the Viroc, the Vacu Works race of champions, which is where they get you know the World of Outlaws champion, the All-Stars champion, uh, and those guys in uh, for a race in the winner gets a provisional spot, which the provisional is still, I mean, if you win the Viroc race and you win your prelim night, then you still transfer via the prelim night and not the, uh, and not the provisional because the provisional basically puts you in 25th or 26th in the race. Just like Kyle Larson before tonight was already locked into the A main because he's the defending champion. Uh, but if he hadn't, uh, if he didn't win the prelim, then he would have gone and started last so uh that's that's the Vibrock race you basically are racing for a provisional and uh early on in the race i have to say cannon mcintosh once again uh was impressive obviously if he won the Vibrock race and the provisional would just be a moot point since he is already locked in from last night but he just he looks really good and he even said at the end of the race that uh he thought he had a shot to win it um spencer baston with rms looks really good in that race uh i'll probably uh, slot some clips into this to show you uh but he got involved with some in a in a wreck, and uh, yeah, he he honestly Spencer Baston, Tanner Thorson, those two really uh, caught my eye in that race. They looked really good. Uh, Kyle Larson, really all night uh, when he dominated the races, was just using the bottom to his advantage. It just it, the bottom hasn't been faster uh, per se, but Larson just looked like he could run the bottom faster than everyone else. Uh, just flat out domination, uh, and then Rico Abreu. Got flat out walled by Brad Sweet, uh, which is something we'll have to pick up on tomorrow, uh, because they'll be racing each other to get again uh, together. My bad, uh, tomorrow, and uh, I'll, I'll put the clip in here. No excuse for that either. A lot of just people getting walled. That was a crazy flip, 
ended up uh, looking at the sky uh, with the back facing up. That was pretty crazy. Uh, rode the wall for a little bit, Logan CV style, but on the straightaway. Uh, crazy accident. Uh, and uh, everything that happened so far was pretty crazy. Um, but I have to say, before we get to the A-Main, the A-Main was just... <laughs> I don't think it's going to get any better this week, honestly. But let's go over the B-Main first. Uh, we had Dazen Persley, Corey Eliason, Carson Quaffle all in the B-Main. Uh, Carson Quaffle ended up transferring to the A. Uh, Dazen Persley transferred to the A. He had trouble early in the A, but he did transfer from the B. Uh, Corey Eliason, unfortunately, though, was involved in a wreck on lap number one. So Corey Eliason, uh, man, just a rough night for him and the Rudine team. I mean, I had that huge flip early, uh, get the car back out in the C, make it to the B, and then... Um, just uh, lap number one, nowhere to go in front of you. Just hate to see it. He came back uh, a couple spots, but wasn't able to make the A, obviously. And if you don't make the A on your prelim, you're pretty, you're solidly back in the alphabet soup. If you finish last in your A, you're solidly back anyways. So, yeah, not making the A is kind of rough. Not what you want at all. So let's get into the A main now. Um, fight time. Fight time. Not an actual fight, but uh, a battle. T battle time. A uh, three-way battle for the win early in the race. You had Shane Golubic, Thomas Meserol, and Kyle Larson. And, man, they put on a show. You Most of the race uh, was kind of a little bit of a letdown because there was just... Every time it felt like something was going to happen and they were getting racy, getting dicey, it just uh, some car in the back of the pack would spin and you'd just uh, get yellow after yellow after yellow. It just was never-ending. Like I said, it's 1.16 as we're recording right now. In the morning... Because the race just went on that long. You know, curfew at the Chili Bowl is 10.30. They went beyond that. Someone's getting fined. <laughs> but what happens in the end? We have this three-car battle all the way through. And uh, so we get to the white flag. Shane Golbick, actually, I think he caught up. He got there early in the race because what I well, I thought, I didn't think he had the speed. But uh, Timez and uh, Larson were just, were just battling really hard. And uh, Shane Golbick was able to use the bottom uh, to kind of gain time on um, Timez and Larson because they were just wasting so much time battling, I thought. And uh, he kind of lucked in there. But really, uh, in the end of the day, Shane Golbick had the pace to be there. Uh, Timez, uh, once they, because there were so many yellows, once they single filed out the restarts to try and not have more yellows, which they uh, they still did, um, they, uh, the top two just kind of trolled the bottom. Team has tried to try the top, but once it slicked off at the top, there's just nothing he could do uh, to catch those two up front. So yeah, Shane Golbick was in uh, coming to the white flag was in a easy transfer spot. It looked like he might have been able to get something on Larson uh, in the lap traffic, but just uh, yeah, he could have had something. But I just got under Tanner Carrick as you'll see here in turn number one, and Tanner Carrick does a thing and they both spin and uh obviously um obviously Shane Goldwick gets the worst of it and yeah you hate to see it easy easy transfer and that that obviously put Thomas Meserol in the catbird's seat and uh yeah you hate to see that for uh, Shane Goldwick and also what bad luck for Matt Wood racing this week oh my gosh uh, to have Mitchell Moles Mitchell Moles and uh, Ryan Bernal up there last night doing really well. And then uh, for, to have their misfortunes back-to-back. -back, and then to have uh, Shane Goldbuck on the final lap. Yeah, Matt Wood Racing going to get a car into the A uh, after the bad luck from last night. And then that happens. I, I, have no, I don't even know what to say about that. That's just, ah, yikes. <laughs> that was not good uh, on Tanner Carrick. But it, anyways, we have a green-white checkered. Carson Quaffle brings out a yellow, once again, on the white flag. It looked like Thomas Meserol was going to move Kyle Larson on the white flag that time. So coming to the next green-white checkered, uh, that would end up being the final green-white checkered. Thomas Meserol tries the bumper. Uh, Larson, I think, kind of purposely kind of stalled the bottom on the exit of two and uh, kind of left more of a gap to Timez, so Timez couldn't try anything sneaky. Uh, but at the end of the day, both Kyle Larson and Thomas Meserol uh, advance uh, to the A main on Saturday. Uh, from Wednesday, or Tuesday, my bad. I'm forgetting my days now. It's technically Wednesday when I'm recording this and when you're watching it. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. What? I Like I said, I have nothing to say. That was a crazy night. Um, just, yeah. 
Sucks for Shane Golubic. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I can't imagine. Now he's going to be uh, in the back. He ended up finishing in the back. Not sure which letter that's going to be. It's probably going to be the J, maybe the I. Uh, so, yeah, that's not not ideal for uh, Shane Golubic. But um, you know, I'll show you the top six here on the screen. And, uh, yeah, let's go over some things from the A-Main that uh, I noticed here. Uh, Timez lucked into the A-Main. I will say that. I'm going to point that out. He should be. He should have been in the B if things would have played out the way they should have. And uh, if Shane Goldbuck hadn't gotten screwed over like that. Because that wasn't... Man, that was not on Shane Goldbuck. There was nothing he could have done differently there. That's one of the situations you look at and it's just... What else would he have done, you know? Um, but yeah, Timez kind of lucked into that. Not what I was expecting. I expected Timez to be top two. Uh, early on, I expected to be just Timez versus Kyle Larson. So Shane Goldbuck... Uh, showing some sneaky speed, which is something we'll have to keep an eye on on Saturday uh, in the Alphabet Soup. Uh, he's someone that has the speed, obviously, to contend with Larson and Meserol. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be hard for him, but there's uh, nothing nothing that tells me that he can't possibly make it uh, to a transfer. Uh, Chase Johnson, we talked about him earlier, the guy who wrecked Dylan Welch. Uh, he actually had a hell of a run in the A, uh, made it from 19th to 7th. He was really our only Alphabet Soup guy of the night. Uh, not as, you know, big to obviously don't believe it was from the sea. I don't think Chase was in the sea, but, um, yeah, just tough luck. Oh, and I, I forgot to mention in the A, uh, Jonathan Beeson was the first yellow. He was running third or fourth and, uh, Jonathan Beeson, uh, spins by himself and, uh, yeah, brings out that yellow. He, uh, ends up, uh, just finishing, I believe 15th somewhere in there. And, uh, yeah, poor night for Jonathan Beeson, someone who did very well. Uh, did very well in the qualifiers. Just uh, is a guy who finished, I believe, top five in the in the A last year. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's not much else to to, to go over uh, from Tuesday. Uh, we'll talk about Kyle Larson real quick. Uh, I mean, in the in the race of champions race, didn't look didn't look like Kyle Larson. I mean, early in the night when he when he uh, won by half a lap, it was like, yeah, Kyle Larson's freaking good, and obviously. And the qualifiers say the same thing. Obviously, he's freaking good. Uh, the race of champions race. E uh, I don't know. He could have been testing out stuff. Obviously, Kyle Larson's going to be good in the A. Uh, that's a duh. Uh, whenever, whenever you say Kyle Larson's going to be good, it's a duh. Duh. <laughs> what? Well, duh. But, um, yeah, I mean, I have nothing else to say. It was a good, it was a great night. I went over all the drama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited for tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be great. So let's go over uh, the drivers for tomorrow. Uh, there's, there's a big lineup for tomorrow. We got some uh, heavy hitters. Once again, uh, Ryan Newman with the Clawson Marshall Racing Team uh, heading on track tomorrow. NASCAR driver. Uh, did very well in his rookie year last year. I was very impressed with uh, Mr. Newman. Sammy Swindell, the five-time champion, the first Swindell Speed Lab car. Uh, hit the track this week. I hope that doesn't mean Kevin Swindell isn't going to be in the booth on the broadcast because I, man, that is the, that's when it's worth buying Flow Racing just to hear Kevin Swindell on the PA. That is so cool. He is such a, he's so good at it. You get so much information from Kevin Swindell. Uh, we got Brad Sweet, uh, 2020 World of Outlaws Series champion. Brad Sweet, the big cat. Uh, looked, uh, he had the incident with Rico. Let's see if anything comes from that, but, um, yeah, Brad Sweet looked pretty competitive. Uh, not making a ton of noise, but we'll see. Parker Price Miller, uh, another good driver, young talent. Kind of reminds me of uh, Gio Selzy, who is also in this uh, in this heat. I don't know if it's because uh, both of them have ran the 71 uh, race parts sprint car, but uh, that's probably why he reminds me of him. But, yeah. Um, we got Santucci, Santino Ferrucci. Uh, the IndyCar driver turned NASCAR driver now. I guess he now he'd be a NASCAR driver because he's an Xfinity driver now, uh, making his uh, second Chili Bowl appearance. His goal was to make the A in his prelim night. And honestly, I'm excited to see if he can do that. I'm going to hold him up to that. We're gonna, can he do that? I don't know. I, it's interesting to see Santino Ferrucci, a guy who's driven an F1 car for Haas, uh, IndyCar driver, a fourth place Indy 500 2020, 2019 Rookie of the Year, uh, Driving a midget and being very passionate about it, uh, doing a lot of testing, uh, sets goals of how he wants to do, uh, not just 
like a Connor Daly who was just kind of in it to in it, literally said that he was in it just because he got a ride offer and he said, hey, why not? No expectation, 100% hope, no expectation. But uh, we've got Brett Moffitt starting tomorrow, uh, rookie in the Chili Bowl once again. Uh, just like uh, Ferrucci, uh, should do okay. Uh, I think he's one of those that he's just here to learn, have fun. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see the, that mustache. Colby Copeland, uh, very experienced for the Matt Wood Racing team. Another Matt Wood driver, teammate uh, Kevin Thomas Jr. Uh, again, I'm paying a lot of attention to Matt Wood Racing this year because they, like I said last night, Zeb Wise, uh, or yesterday morning, it's, it's, oh, it's so messed up. Uh, but you got Zeb Wise, Casey Kane, uh, all these guys on that team. And, uh, yeah, Jake Swanson with the Alex Bowman Racing Team. Hopefully he's going to do better than uh, C.J. Leary did. He had some bad luck uh, with a blown tire in the A on his prelim night. But uh, Jake Swanson, uh, first start with Alex Bowman Racing in this year's Chili Bowl. Let's see uh, what he can do. Uh, already talked about Gio Selzy uh, making, uh, starting tomorrow. We got... Uh, Brian Carver, the Give Back Classic winner for Keith Coons. Uh, let's see how he does. I'm excited to see him at the track. Uh, he won uh, some races in the Tulsa Shootout, so he's uh, one of the most, like, he's one of the most, yeah, he's definitely one of the most intriguing rookies in, in the field this year, and I'm excited to see how he does. Uh, Rico, another Keith Coons car, uh, finished fifth last year. I think he's probably one of the, I'm, my, at first, I would say Rico would be the third car to kind of uh, go against uh, Larson and Bell. Because I think Larson and Bell are obviously the two favorites because they've dominated the last couple of years. But I would say uh, Rico, Rico's there. Thomas Meserol is there. I'm leaning Kenan McIntosh right now. I don't know why. He finished third last year. He's riding that. Uh, just, yeah. And uh, not to mention, I've been thinking this back in my head today. Uh, I've talked about Chris Rebell a little bit. Talked about you know some guys making starts later in the week. I have not said a damn word about Buddy Kofoid. Uh, was a good rookie last year. Uh, starts on Thursday, not tomorrow, but I'm gonna bring him up now because he's someone that's been back in my head. I'm just gonna put his name out there now so I look smarter. Uh, we got finally Chase Elliott. Big day tomorrow for all the Chase Elliott fans. Uh, everybody who is uh, in it for Chase Elliott this year. Uh, very excited to see how he does, honestly. Uh, just He looked very racy when he ran at Millbridge, uh, was very competitive there, and uh, I really think that uh, maybe he can pull a miracle. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'll talk about it tomorrow, though, and you can learn all about it here and on Twitter at Race Nation TV, at Race Nation TV also on Instagram. Uh, you notice my sick hat, The Torque Show. Uh, shout out to Tommy Kendall and The Torque Show. Uh, go on Facebook, look up the Torque Show. They do great uh, content before the IMSA Sports Car Championship races. Uh, and they will also be sponsoring my IMSA, my P2 car on iRacing at the uh, Rolex 24, just like they did for the uh, Petit Le Mans. Uh, spoiler. So, uh, yeah, go check out Tommy Kendall and the nice people at the Torque Show. And uh, that'll do it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully, uh, tomorrow's event runs a little bit earlier, so I'm not up at 1 a.m. So uh, see you guys tomorrow, and I'll see you in the next.